On the fringe of the Sydney metropolitan area, some 50 kilometres northwest of the Sydney CBD, lies the town of Richmond in the Hawkesbury region. This region has a rich heritage in agriculture and is the home of the Western Sydney University Hawkesbury campus. In 2014, a joint initiative between Western Sydney University and Horticulture Innovation Australia began plans to develop a new world-class greenhouse facility and sought design input from research world leaders. Fran Sugar of Western Sydney University explains. Our construction process started quite a few years ago when we engaged with WUR, which is the Wangenengen University of Research in Holland. With a plan on paper, WSU began the process of selecting the primary contractor. The primary contractor to us was to ensure that we got value for money for the university for this very important project. You need to understand that the, this place started as Hawkesbury Agricultural College about 125 years ago. And this is one opportunity for us to uh, further build on that agricultural base and the horticultural base uh, that, is, that has been here for a long time. We were looking for the right type of project. Uh, we were looking for something that could uh, provide benefit for research and provide benefit for uh, teaching and training as well. And we came up with the concept that uh, we have now constructed. WSU began the process of selecting the primary contractor. AIS Greenworks were subcontracted as an Australian supplier and installer of water treatment systems and irrigation, electrical control and monitoring systems, and climate control including fog and heating. An Australian company to ensure safety and quality were to Australian standards without compromise. We achieved a facility that, from our point of view, uh, complied with Australian standards. From our point of view, complied with the functionality requirements placed on the design. And from our point of view, in addition to safety, um, made sure that everything was compliant with Australian standards. Because a lot of the international facilities, when you actually look at them, uh, there was a retrofit project program to then make it compliant with Australian conditions, whereas we wanted it to be compliant by the time we had practical completion. And I believe that that's what we've achieved. The level of detail that has been executed in this facility is second to none. Phil Jones of AIS Greenworks was involved from the initial planning stages to ensure the finished product was tailored to the customer and fitted with industry best practice. So in early April, I got involved with the design team uh, to look at what was required to fulfil our requirements within the design spec. Now the, the terms of reference, known affectionately as the TOR, was a bible that we went by. However, it was a design and construct. Um, very early in the piece, we found a lot of things that were not desirable for the Australian climate or the way that we operated. And so we spent probably the first six weeks at re-engineering and writing up about 28 different RFIs, so requests for further information. And those 28 odd RFIs were the things that were pertaining to do we have the right size holding tanks? Are we putting the tanks in the right place? Are we putting enough water? How are we shifting the water? Where are we putting the water? The system was engineered from this point on to be viewed and run in the most ergonomic fashion. An apex structure consists of eight equally sized individual compartments for quality controlled research, each having its own dedicated water supply and climate control. Compartment 9 spans the eastern length of the structure and provides a training facility for students, growers and industry professionals. The eight research spaces are encased by a tenth compartment, acting as a common corridor, ensuring there are no opportunities for transfer of heat from the external environment. So in this unique little building, which is only roughly 40 by 40, so 1,600 square metres, we actually have nine completely individually operated greenhouses. When it came to the water systems, it was decided the holding tanks would be housed at the western end of the structure, closest to the mixing and day tanks for the compartments. 
A total of 270,000 litres of rainwater can be collected from the new greenhouse structure, as well as one of the adjoining pre-existing structures. This, in conjunction with the potable water tank, freshwater buffer tank, gutter drain tank, treated blend water storage, and treated freshwater storage, totals an astounding 328,000 litres of available water to the greenhouse. The greenhouse compartments use water for several different purposes, but the primary use is for irrigation. It is blended, treated, and delivered via a purpose-built PREVA-controlled irrigation technical unit. The original tour had the tanks sitting behind me, which are the irrigation tanks, placed out in the corridors in front of each of the rooms. They drew problems within themselves, how we were going to get the water to them, how we were going to distribute the water from there into the, into the rooms themselves. Um, we had to get power to them, we had to get the, pipe, the water to them, so all of those things. So we started to look at what you see behind me, which is a rather complicated but simple little process of having all the day tanks, so there's a, an irrigation tank for every room, and then the stock tanks sitting in front of me, which hold eight different recipes of fertiliser and micronutrients that the irrigation technical unit then takes and puts in the day tanks behind me. Water is sent to the AIS Greenworks hydroponic gutter via a series of above ground but hidden pipelines. The nutrient rich water is then delivered to the Grodan growing medium via a series of drip emitters to feed the growing plants. Excess irrigation water is collected in the gutter drains and can be returned via the custom built CB stainless sump to the gutter drain recycling tanks before being UV treated for pathogens and blended with fresh water to be stored for later use by the technical unit to fill the day tanks. Alternatively, this water can be returned to campus recycling for use elsewhere on Western Sydney University grounds. UV treated fresh water is available for the high pressure fogging system. The custom built AIS Greenworks high pressure fog system in this case is primarily used to humidify the air but serves a dual purpose in cooling the air when needed. A separate chilled water cooling system is also in place and the condensate from these units is captured and measured to provide further data to the control system before being delivered back to the irrigation network. Climate sensors are in place throughout the 10 compartments to measure the temperature, humidity and the carbon dioxide levels. There is also an external weather station constantly feeding data to the technical unit to ensure internal climate changes can be made in real time. Due to the limited ventilation as a result of single insect mesh vents, pad and fan cooling has been opted for in compartment 9 to add an additional cooling method. This is the only compartment not cooled with chilled water. On the northern wall of the compartment, high volume industrial fans are used to draw external air in through the wet wall on the southern end. An AIS Greenworks gas hydronic heating system is used to heat the floor pipe rails in compartments 1 to 9 and the wall in compartment 9 and 10, 10 being the corridors. A closed loop system uses Grunfoss pumps to usher 75 degrees Celsius water throughout the building via a highway of insulated pipelines. As the water reaches the desired greenhouse compartment, a series of valves controlled by the climate computer manage which compartment requires the heated water to run through the dual purpose heat rail system that lines the concrete floor or walls. Once a desired temperature is met, the valves then shut off that part of the system. With the view of having a minimal impact on light interference by the installation infrastructure, the AIS Greenworks team have taken an approach of burying most of the cabling and installing the pipework into the compartments at or below 1.2 metres to reduce light interference. There was little nuances that kept crawling in to the process. Um, they decided to go from a standard weed mat floor to a concrete floor. So what that led to was the need now to take all of our irrigation and drainage pipes from below ground to above ground. Normally in a standard greenhouse design you sit all of those things below the ground. With the completion of the greenhouse prior to Christmas of 2016 and final commissioning in early 2017, the Western Sydney University Capital Works team were appreciative of the standard of completion by an Australian team. Uh, we have a functional greenhouse that is 
very well suited for the research that we're hoping to do. Uh, we have a teaching and training facility that will allow the horticulturalists to understand the technologies that we've got. We will have something that is compliant with the Australian conditions from an occupational health and safety point of view. And we have a facility that basically complies fully with all of the Australian standards that we have, the, the normal customs and conventions that we have in Australia. And I think that'll be very, 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 very good uh, when these similar projects are rolled out to other parts of Australia and possibly even other parts of the world. The first tomato harvest from Greenhouse Compartment 9 began in the middle of May 2017. The first of many providing students and researchers the opportunity to study varieties of plants and steering methods. This facility will be the showcase of Australian horticulture for many years to come and its importance to the greater protected cropping industry is yet to be fully realised. It's a tip of the hat to the local Hawkesbury community and a tribute to the agricultural history that will now continue and be the cornerstone of natural research and development for the next 125 years.